Yeah. But we're after training with uh, wing centre back Michael Chambers. Michael, I said to the captain, Ricky, um, is it a bit frustrating given our performances in a lot of the games this year that we haven't really got the points that we think we deserve? Yeah, definitely. I think I think you can see from the way we are playing, we have a lot like a woken game the other day, the whole of the first half I didn't really see they didn't have much. We had a lot of the ball, we created a lot of the chances, so we just couldn't really kind of put the final touches to it and I think it's obviously it's hard to say, especially to the fans, that it will come, it will come, it will come. Obviously, at some stage, we do have to start putting the end product to some of our performances and start putting a few points on the board. But no, it is, it is quite frustrating at the moment. But Do you think the majority of goals we're giving away could be, could be stopped? I mean, it's not as if sides are opening us up and carving us open. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think a lot of the goals we are conceding are cheap. And obviously, me being a defender, I obviously look back at a lot of the games and a lot of the goals are very cheap and can easily be avoided. And I think that's some of the things that... Maka, Faz, Barnes have got us working on in training, just the little the little bits that are obviously giving away goals, working on that and I think eventually we will become a lot more solid and then small goals will stop and it will take something amazing to score and sometimes as a defender if they score an amazing goal sometimes you just put your hands up and say that was an amazing goal, get on with it. Also do you think some of our centre backs could do some damage in the box at the other end, at corners <laughs> and, and free kicks? And Definitely, and I think that's up. That's another thing we've been working on, like the other side of obviously me as a defender, the other side of our game, working on set pieces and where we should be in movements and just being aggressive and having the design to get your head on the ball. And I think, yeah, I think it is the small margins in games when it is nil-nil, us going up for corners and free kicks and whatever could be the deciding goal that could, you know what I mean, a one-nil win at the end of the day, so, yeah. You know, right. Um, do you think that we could probably be attacking the box a little bit more in open play ourselves? Because we are getting a lot of possession, we're pinning sides back, we're getting wide. Yeah. We're outplaying them for, yeah. for periods, but yeah. are we attacking the box enough? No, I agree. And I think, obviously, it is, we do need to sort of get a lot more players in the box. I think you saw that in the Woking game the other day. We had, I don't know, Ben Jeffers was putting about four or five crosses in the first half and sort of their defenders were just cleaning up and there was no real challenge or no real sort of... No one was really busting a gut to get in the box, so yeah. That is another thing that obviously the team has spoke about in the meetings and we're kind of addressing and trying to put touches onto. We've got a great chance now, Michael. We've got two home games. We've got a game on television tomorrow against Tranmere Rovers. Massive game, something the players must all be, all be looking forward to. But with two games on the spin at home, yeah. at home, we're looking to get the points, yeah? Yeah, definitely. I think the boys go into every game wanting to get points. I don't think it makes a difference home or away or on TV or not. The boys want to win every game. So we're not treating this game any different to any others. All the boys want to win. So we've still, still got a lot of confidence in the camp? Yeah, definitely. I think all the boys, you can see from the session today, all the boys are going to check. <laughs> They're all buzzing, all the management staff behind the boys. They've got loads of confidence in us. And we all, we have confidence in each other. We trust each other. So yeah, I think don't, we'll bounce back. Everyone, every team goes for a spell. Look at Chelsea, the moment. they're going for a spell. They're one of the best teams in England. So every team goes for a spell. We'll bounce back and we'll start putting points on the board. You've got a message for the fans before tomorrow's game tomorrow? Yeah, come and cheer really loud, cheer us on, watch us win. Brilliant. Cheers, Michael. Thanks Cheers. for that and good luck tomorrow. Right, we're at the training ground um, after the final training before tomorrow's game on BT against Premier with Captain Ricky Waller. Rick, is it frustrating how well we've played in a lot of the games um, this season to not really get the points that we think we deserve? Yeah, it is frustrating. Um, like you say, we've, we've had a few good performances. We've not necessarily picked up as many points as we'd like and what we deserve, but I think everyone's still positive around the place and it's a big thing um, Faz and Macro have touched on today. We've still got to keep positives in and around the training ground and he's got to look to go again on, on Saturday and hopefully we can get the points that our, um, our performances have deserved. What, what are the main things that um, Faz and Co are, are, are saying we need to do? Do we need to be a bit braver in the box? Do we need to have more shots? Um, yeah, you could say that. It's a bit of, um, bit of both boxes. Um, Stop giving away soft goals. Um, you know, no team has really had to cut us open and and work very hard for their goals. As such, we seem to be falling and, and giving soft goals away. And then at the other end, we're maybe not taking our half chances that we get that other teams seem to take. So it's very important. Obviously, both boxes we got to um, improve our standards. Really, obviously, when those half chances come along and when those chances do come along, got to put them away, especially when we're playing well. Exactly, we're not being outclassed really by anybody. I mean, we're dominating possession at periods of the game. We're pinning other teams, decent teams, back into their own boxes. And is, is it just a case of, of keep believing, keep working hard, and, and get it to change? Yeah, definitely. We've, um, like you say, first half against Woking, we've, you know, we've outplayed them on their own patch. You know, they've won 
you know, the majority of almost all their games this season, so to go there and do that. But the disappointing thing is we didn't score when we was on top. You know, if we score when we we're on top there in the first half, you know, it becomes a different game. But we didn't get the goal, and then their goals obviously knocked us out, knocked us on the back foot. So um, we just need to score when we're on top in games. Um, like you say, we've we've come in for a lot of praise from opposing teams and managers and people that have actually been and watched the games, but um, it doesn't count for for points on the scoreboard as such, um, which is obviously the most important thing. We need to get those points on the board. What, what do you say as captain to some of the younger players tomorrow with a live television game coming up? Big opponents, ex-league club, former, you know, they've played all the top sides in, in their recent history, Tranmere, and then we've got them live on television tomorrow. So what as captain do you say to some of the younger players that haven't experienced that Just kind of circus? play your normal game, you know, prepare the same way. It's obviously an earlier kickoff, so, you know, a bit of advice would be, you know, do we get up earlier, do you eat slightly earlier? So, you know, kicking off at 12.30, boys need to prepare slightly differently. Obviously, with travel arrangements, etc., that's a big part, you know, for a football match. But just for the younger lads, it's just got to keep going, keep believing, um, keep our heads up, um, keep good body language when, if we do go our goal down, because that's something that we need to work on. Um, we just got to keep going, keep keep the faith, and, and keep believing, really, because the performances are definitely there for everyone to see. So we're going in the right direction, but we've got to get points on the board. And our fans again at Woking made their noise, um, but obviously. Tranmere are likely to bring a few down tomorrow, so it's, yeah. it's important that our fans try and get behind us from before the first whistle and keep going all the way to the end, yeah, tomorrow? Yeah, definitely. The fans have been brilliant. Um, after every game, you know, you can hear them calling and, and praising us for, you know, when we've played well. Um, you know, we travel well away in numbers. It's great to see the amount of numbers at Wrexham that they were. Um, great to see, you know, us getting clapped off the pitch as well um, up there. So thank you for the fans for, you know, all your support so far because boys definitely do appreciate it and it's three points tomorrow Rick is that the aim yeah yeah absolutely um, home game we'll be looking to win um, got to turn our home ground into a fortress it's a big thing we touched on at the start of the season so we'd definitely be looking for three points and um, a, a big performance it's, all the boys are up for it thanks for that Ricky and good luck tomorrow yeah thank you, Cheers, mate. Thank you. we're at training just ahead of the Tranmere game with um, Louis, Matt and Paul Louis, I'll firstly come to you and we'll have a look at the Woking game because we, we had to shoot and we couldn't catch you after the game. But um, first half, I thought possession-wise and the way we played against them was absolutely fantastic. Did we pay for not putting the ball away? Yes, uh, definitely. We um, had a lot of possession, created a, uh, a lot of good chances. Um, we just didn't have enough bodies in the box um, at the right moments. And it's something that we spoke about at half-time. Um, you know, you hear it all the time when you don't take your chances, it usually comes back to bite you. Um, and yes, unfortunately, it happened again. Yeah. Paul, we've drawn lots of praise from several managers this season and fans from the way we play. Um, is it important now that despite playing pretty football, despite dominating for times, even away from home against big clubs, that we start turning possession into points? Oh, most definitely. I mean, that's, that's been the message all week. I mean, it's been a message beforehand. You know, uh, it's the complete performance, that's what we're looking for. It's times when we can play that pretty football, that expansive football, we're going to try and do that. But there's going to be times when the team's going to, going to throw everything at us. So we've got to be resilient, resilient. we've got to dig in, get together. Uh, hard work sometimes, that grit, determination is what's going to get you through. Maybe spells in a game when you're not quite at it. But again, it's, it's having a complete performance and being able to do both sides of the game. Matt, our, form our formation is sort of, we started pre-season with the three, then we went to a four, started the season with a four, and we have tinkered a little bit of it. Are we trying to find our base formation to work from, or are we changing formation to suit opposition? I wouldn't say it's a it's changing formation to suit opposition. I think you just we've just got to look at who have, who's available each week to us. Um, the information we've got at hand on the opposition, um, and then the best way that we have of affecting the game positively. Um, and, and occasionally, it's, you know, it's, we've, we've, we've tried things and changed things and, um, you know, we're finding out different bits with every game that goes on about the players that we've got and, and, and how they like to work. So, um, so, so yeah, we've got, we've got some, some good feedback from, from, uh, from those formations so far. Lou, we've been playing George Porter up front um, recently and for me, I think his work rate has been absolutely unbelievable. A comment on George and the, and the way he was playing for us up front? Yeah, that's, um, uh, you've put it perfectly there. His, his work rate is, is second to none. It's been uh, very, very impressive. 
we've all um, you know we've all let him know um, that it's been it's been great you know and but I'm sure um, he, he's agreed um, his quality hasn't quite been uh, as good as it can be in that final third and that's the only area that's lacking in his game you know other than that he's he's been he's been leading our line uh, very very well and uh, causing the opposition all sorts of problems with his with his direct running in behind you know his pace uh, running out into channels and, and, and like I say the only thing that's missing from his game is just that last little bit final quality in that final third and um, you know he's going to keep going because he's a he's a great character um, and uh, we've got faith that it will work out for him um, you know very soon. Um, we'll come along to, to Matt. Matt we've just had the transfer for permanent, the window for permanent transfers closed uh, and we weren't actively involved in that. Do you, do you did, did we try and get involved in it or, or are we sort of where we are with players and that's it and maybe possibly look at the loan window? I think we'll definitely be looking at the loan window um, permanent wise I think we're pretty much set um, we're happy with that that squad of players as, as a core um, to go go and work with now uh, over the course of a season and obviously there's going to be a couple of new faces um, here and there in terms of, of loans we're going to have to be smart with that um, we're, we're still looking at a potentially one coming in in terms of a loan um, and uh, and a few maybe one or two of the young lads going out and getting experience um, playing some games uh, slightly lower level but um, I think we're happy with the squad that we've got and it's, it's a case of us now going away and, and getting the best out of them. Paul, there's a great at atmosphere out on that um, training pitch, they all seem together. How has um, cha training changed this week or are we carrying on as usual? Is there any slight little tinkering, any little things that we've said to the players just to try and keep the confidence going? No, it's just reassuring them obviously that what we're doing and the things that we've been working on obviously it can, can be successful. I mean, like you say, the first half at Woking was proof of that. Um, alongside that, we just fine tuning those little fine details that need need tinkering and, and changing, and just highlighting some of the areas that we feel that we we need to be a little bit better um, whilst games are are going on and as games are progressing. Just obviously dealing with the environment and the situation as it progresses. Louis, we've got some good news with um, injuries. If you'd just take us through. Um, I'll, I'll name the player Barney Williams. He was out there today taking part in training. You must be pleased. Is he is he nearly back? Yeah, yeah. Very happy that Barney's back. Um, he trained with us yesterday and trained with us today. Um, you know, he, he's he's like a, a new signing. Um, you know, he's out there and he's buzzing around with his with his you know high energy. Um, he's a great character to have around a training ground. And and uh, the word we kind of uh, the phrase we like to use with him is is Barney's like an old pro. You know, he's, he's only young, he's only 20 years old, but, um, you know, the character that he has, the way he carries himself out in a training field, the energy intensity that he brings, you know, it's, it's definitely a, a big boost for us to have him back, you know. So it's a matter of him just getting a bit more uh, uh, match fitness, sharpness under his belt, um, and then hopefully he'll be ready to, uh, to, to be involved with us. Uh, Matt, Joey Taylor, another one that's back out in the training field and, and another uh, boost for us. Yeah, massive boost, massive boost, sorry. Um, you know, the three of us, see him as, as a huge, huge, huge uh, prospect for the club. Um, the, the quality that he brings to, to, the, to the training field, um, people might not have seen it you know, in the games yet because his, his chances have been limited, but, but uh, you know, the quality that he has out on the training field, um, he's improving. And, and again, like Barney, he, he is kind of wise beyond his years. Uh, he's one of these youngsters that you would, you would look at him and you'd think he's you know, five, six years older than what he actually is. Um, and uh, it's great to have him back. And again, we're just kind of getting him, getting him sharp and fit. Um, and uh, and then we've got some good plans for him. Paul, um, Kieran St. Amy, who has been waiting for his operation. I understand that the operation is now taking place. Can you can you update us on anything? Yeah, I think heard? Kieran's due for a follow up next week. I believe. I say he's got to go down to St George's Park. Is that right? I believe he's out there. So we're just waiting to get a follow up so he can get his rehab program, and hopefully we'll get him back on the road to recovery. Louis, um, big game tomorrow. BT Sport back in town, um, lunchtime kickoff. Tranmere Rovers, big club, but they're probably not in the greatest of form. So we've got nothing to fear tomorrow, no? Yeah, no, it's, it's a good time to play them. Um, as you say, they're, they're not in the greatest, um, you know, vein of form at the moment. And um, you know, we we need a boost. We need to uh, to uh, get a win under our belt, and, and it's a great opportunity for that. You know, there's extra motivation there with the BT cameras. Um, but you know we're going to go into it like a, uh, every other game. We're going to go in very positive because there are a lot of positives at the moment. We've spoken to the lads about you know how we're going to play, um, 
you know, and, and it's a matter of us just going out there and executing the game plan, you know, for, for the whole 90 minutes, I should say 95 minutes actually. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're not far away at all, um, you know, we're just looking for that full complete uh, performance where we're, we're solid defensively, um, we, create, we keep continue to create the chances and have the possession, but then we need that finishing end product as well. So are we remaining with our principles and, and how we're, we're training and coaching the players or is there a bit of a tendency to go a little bit more gung-ho to try and get those points? Or are we, are we happy you know, to just carry on trying to do what we do? We're not panicking, we're not going to change our No, I think, I think the, the last thing, that, the worst thing that we could do at the moment is panic. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's so important to, to keep the, uh, the environment that the boys are, are working in as positive as possible. Um, and you know our, our principles. Um, I don't think will we'll, we'll, we'll change. Will ever change, really. You know they are the principles that we, we kind of stick by, and and we believe in them. Um, and at the moment, it's it's very simple. You know it's 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 the fine detail in either 18 yard box, both the, both defensively and attacking wise, where we're falling down, um, and we are um, not quite there yet. And we're working on it very very hard with the boys and. Um, you know the boys know the importance of it, and they understand that um, the things that we are repetitive, repetitively telling them um, are, are so important. And it's the difference between us picking up points and not picking up points. So, you know, we're, we're, we're not the sort of guys that have one way of playing. We don't just like to play pretty football. We also don't just like to hoof it. Um, we try and play as effectively as possible, um, depending on the situation. So, and the boys are on board with that. We'll come to Paul finally. The fans, Paul, I think they've been good this season. I don't really think they've got going yet apart from you, Ray. Tomorrow is the perfect opportunity in front of the TV cameras with a large following from Tranmere to really start to stake that up, you know, approaching kickoff. Yeah, I mean, I'm not being funny. I mean, we've been speaking about it this week. I think in times of adversity, I think the worst thing you can do is start getting at each other. I think you've got to get around each other. I think, if anything, those are the tough times that bring you closer together. And that's fans included, you know, it's, it's all one club. There's only one goal we're all aiming for, and that's to be successful. So, I mean, if everyone's pushing in the same direction, I don't see why we can't. Brilliant. Well, thanks for that, guys. Good luck tomorrow and, and up the wings.